they're saying it's a mistake in communication. Um, let, let me first of all say saying that although I'm not qualified to talk from the Catholic side very well, because I don't I I don't know whether miscommunication is code for we always wanted it to happen and we're very sorry we got caught out in public and so we're pretending to change our mind, which it might be. Um, but what we do know is it's the most dreadful offence to the ordinariat. Mm -hmm. um, because these are the same tribe in Anglican terms. These are the same, the same people. They, they're Anglo-Catholics and they all belong to the society. Uh, and since the ordinariat way was opened, something like a hundred plus Anglican priests from the society, from the Anglo-Catholic society, uh, have paid a, a very significant sacrifice. I mean, they've got much more out of it than they've given up, but they had to give up a lot. Mm -hmm. And they've become Catholic priests, and by and large, they're very good ones. Um, and, 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 and there's no point in beating around the bush. When I asked somebody who, who's in the know, I won't, I won't give his name, but you can expect him to know exactly what's going on. I said, why have, why have this lot? We know who they are. They're all colleagues. Some of them are friends. Uh, some of them are not friends. <laughs> well, why have they stayed behind? And the only answer is because most of them want to indulge their homosexual preferences. Okay. And they would, be, they would find it difficult to do it as Roman Catholics. And that may surprise some people. But, uh, and I'm sorry yeah. to say, but, um, but, but the Anglo-Catholic movement, particularly in London, where Jonathan Baker is Bishop of Fulham, is notoriously full of, of, of people who live out their gay preferences. Uh, and are proud of it, and have created a subculture. Mm -hmm. uh, and only only the ones who are willing to have given that up joined the Ordinariat. So there are two reasons for wanting to defend the Ordinariat. The first is that these are people who want to be Catholic and became Catholic. They had the courage of their convictions, and they paid the price. The second is the people who came across have high ethical standards, and they lift them out. And the people who, by and large, one shouldn't generalize, and one shouldn't point the finger, uh, and there would be exceptions. But by and large, the people who stayed behind belong to a culture where, um, where, 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 where gay proclivity was was one of the hallmarks of of the group. Um, yeah. And so, if you like, this this leads to a more charged situation because uh, so the good guys, from my point of view, and perhaps your point of view, and perhaps some of our listeners' point of view, are in the ordinary ad. So now when the bad guys, or the guys who won't pay the price, or won't clean up their ethical behavior, when they approach Rome and say, we're on a, we're on a kind of a cross between a holiday and a pilgrimage, and we'd like, we'd like to strut around in the most prestigious church we can find in order to strengthen our wholly misconceived opinions that we are Catholic priests, and they're given a church, it causes a problem. Now, why are their opinions wholly misconceived? The answer is because they call themselves Catholic Anglicans. But if they really were Catholic, then they would have to take Apostolica Curi seriously. 